All right. So let's continue the conversation in regards to objections and, and some of the stuff that you're going to hear right now. So whether you call or knock, right? One of the biggest things that you're going to get when you call or knock, and you brought this up, is not right now. We're not going to move right now. We're not going to put the home back on the market right now, right? That's a common one that you get. What do you typically say when you hear that? You. Well, when do you plan on relisting it? Okay, so they're saying not right now, you're saying, so when do you plan on yeah, doing it? When. Okay, cool. And how do they respond to that typically? Uh, just, we're not sure or end of the year. Okay, so you do get a response and it keeps the conversation going. You just want to make it better. Correct, because okay. after that, then I'm left with... You're kind of stuck. Yeah. Okay, cool. So um, we, we, we can drill that a little bit. So tell me uh, not right now, and then I'll give you a bunch of responses that you can use, right? So we'll assume that this is either somebody... Um, we'll first go with the expired, right? Because the expired is the person who you want to continue the conversation and you want to see if they want to do something now, but they're brushing you off. And that's really what not right now is. Most of the time, it's a brush off. It's basically saying, I don't want to talk to you, right? So tell me, uh, hey, like when do you guys plan on, you know, uh, interviewing agents again? And just tell me not, not right now. Yeah, not right now. We're holding off. Yeah, I mean, you're, you're kind of frustrated at this point, right? For sure. Yeah, it's been, uh, I see here the home was on the market for six months. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, so at any other point, did you guys think about pulling the home off the market or did, did you want to ride it out the six months to see if it was going to sell? Just ride it out. Yeah. We're just riding it out. Yeah. Okay. Um, had you gotten an offer yesterday or the day before, would you have taken it? Depends on the price. Okay. You Depends see what, on the offer. You see what I did there? Yeah. If Switch I it up. Well, not even that, just that last question especially. Had you gotten an offer yesterday when you were on the market or the day before, right? What would you have done? I didn't gotcha. say, would you take it? Because gotcha. you can easily say, no, I said, what would you have done? Mm -hmm. So there's a subtle shift there. But you heard what you said, right? You're like, oh, if the price was right, that means you still want to sell. Ooh. You see what I'm saying? So yeah. what you're saying doesn't line up with the real intention behind it. And that's why I like having that conversation and I like to keep it going. So what did I do in the beginning? I said, you're frustrated, right? I acknowledged it. Because most people, when they say that, you can hear the frustration in their voice or they're just basically over it. They're like, you know what? I don't want to do anything, right? Mm -hmm. This other one, do you hear this? Well, you know, we're not going to sell, but if you have a buyer, bring them. You hear I've that heard too? That, yes. Okay, cool. How do you respond to that? What uh, do you what say? Do say? What do you say typically? Yeah. Uh, what do I say? What do I say? I say, uh, well, would you... Would you be working with the same agent you worked with in the past? Okay, cool. That's buyer? the wrong way to go about yeah. it, but that's good, right? Yeah. So I say, great. Um, if you tell me that, so tell me that, hey, uh, you know, are you guys still going to put this thing back on the market? Tell me the, you know, oh, we're not going to sell, but. Yeah, we're not going to sell, but if you have a buyer, we're open to offers. Okay, cool. So basically, it sounds like to me, Tanner, that you want to get this thing sold. It's just you don't want to deal with the hassle. Yeah, right. And you're mind right now does the traditional method of listing it and selling it not work for sure yeah yeah so you kind of want to go the easy route and just see if somebody has a buyer right right now here's a question if i had a buyer mm -hmm. how would would you be okay with me bringing you the buyer now as opposed to when your home was actually on the market no okay i'll reword that and do it again right, right. if i had a buyer now why would i wait until you're off the market I don't know. So if I did tell you that I have a buyer, would you believe me? Probably not. Okay. So is this out of frustration that you're going with this route? Yes. Yeah. Okay. You see what I'm doing there? I rephrased it again. And you can reword that a million different ways. Mm -hmm. Say, so if I had a buyer, why would I wait until you're off the market to call you, Tanner? This is another way of doing it. Yeah. Does that make any sense? No, it doesn't make cool. any sense. Now, I understand yeah. listing it is inconvenient. However, mm -hmm. do you realize that that's the way to get the most money? Yeah, I mean, that makes sense, but... Okay, here's, here's another way of doing it. Now, in, in the sale, uh, where were you moving to, by the way? Uh, just down the road. Okay, down the road. So you're staying local. Cool. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. What's one of the most important things when it comes to this? Aside from getting the home sold, do you want the most money in your pocket? Is that important to you? Yes. Okay, now if you sell it off market and people only call you and bring you a buyer, do you think you're going to get the most money doing it that way? Probably not, no. Okay, you see where I'm going? Like, again, I'm just giving different examples so people can hear, but this is how you attack it. I'm attacking the logic. And just like in the first one, when we were going back and forth, I wanted to reveal the reality. Because you're going to say, it's easy to say, I'm not interested, brush it off, whatever. But the reality is, if they want to sell, I have to ask questions in order to reveal it. Mm -hmm. Right? And that's why in that first example that I gave you, I asked the questions that I asked. 
hey, had somebody came yesterday and offered, what would you have done? If you even entertain that question, you still want to sell whether you tell me you want to or not. You get that, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, hey, had somebody come yesterday and said, I want to buy it and they made you an offer, what would you have done? And then you say, oh, I would have negotiated it. That really means that they still want to sell, right? Mm -hmm. But 10 seconds before you told me, we're going to wait, we're going to push it off. Great. So if you said that, like, let's go back to that first example. And I say, great. Right. That first expired example that you gave me, right. We're going to hold off. That was the original objection. You remember, right? Great. Had somebody come yesterday. We'll, we'll continue the role play from there. Had somebody come yesterday or the day before and offered you, what would you have done? We would have entertained it. Okay. So it sounds to me like you still want to sell. You're just frustrated and you're kind of like, I don't know what to do right now. Right. Right. Yeah. It's just the, experience we've had with putting it on the market it didn't sell for 200 days so cool. i mean what's you know, what's i get it right i get it right you want certainty this time correct correct yeah now for you to have that certainty you're going to have to sit down with an agent and discuss that whole process again correct correct you see you see where i'm going with it right i can do it again so here's another way of doing it what would you need to know before you even meet with somebody or put the home back on the market again this next time? How long they've been in the business, how many homes they've sold, whether... Okay, cool. You're making that stuff up. Yeah. The last agent that you picked, were they like the local expert and somebody who was pretty experienced? Yeah, they had good reviews. Yeah, We looked them up online oh. and they had good reviews, good brokerage. So. so it sounds like you did your due diligence then. Mm-hmm. You just told me though, you want somebody with experience who sold a lot of homes and in the business, you did that the time before and it didn't work. No, yeah, I guess not, yeah. Hmm. So that would be for you right there. That's why I asked the question, was the last person you picked a local expert or experience? Because most people are gonna say yes. So I can say, so, sir, so for a fact, you know that even, here's another way of rephrasing that objection handler that I gave you. So even if I showed you on paper that I'm the man, that doesn't necessarily mean that your home's gonna sell because your home didn't sell, right? Mm -hmm. So what do you think you're gonna do differently this time than in the agent that you choose? We really have to make sure they know the market, you know. Because really it's about not just knowing the market but understanding price and understanding Mm -hmm. buyers and understanding how the bank is gonna appraise the property, right? Mm -hmm. Right, yep. I mean, did did I say anything special? No, but you're going to say yes, because that's the reality. So really you need a pricing expert. Would you agree? I think so. Cool. How do you feel about the price that you put the home on the market for and that you weren't able to get this last time? Were you confident in that price or do you think you guys maybe were asking a little bit too much? It was the same price as the comparables. Okay. So So if it was the same as the comparables, why don't you think it sold? Might've been multiple options. The buyer's you know, we're able to shop around and go with someone else. Okay. So looking at the same price, the other homes were more appealing at that same price than yours, basically. Right? I guess. Yeah. So what, what would you do this next time to make your home more appealing to a buyer? Pause. You see where I'm going with this? I'm going off what you're saying and I'm still technically kind of following the script, but I'm really listening to what you're saying and I'm guiding the conversation based on what you're saying. So before we continue, do you feel comfortable enough yet to do what I'm doing to where I'm still kind of scripted, but I'm a little bit off and I know where I'm taking this. Or do you still feel like you don't know the script well enough to do what I just did? A little bit of both. So, okay. I do. Do you see the logic behind what I'm doing though? And do you see how it's like very effective when it comes to talking? And then I try that and I get lost. Of course. You're going to have to try and fail. Yeah. Are you okay with that though? I want to make this point. Are you okay doing it and then getting hung up on or saying you're a fucking idiot and then going to the next call saying, okay, I'm trying it. It's just not there yet. Are you cool with that? Have you accepted that? Because that's going to happen. Yeah, for sure. Okay, cool. Just making sure. So, great. So, and that's why I said the pricing expert, blah, blah, blah. Where do you think we need to go? Okay, so what adjustments do you think need to be made this time then to make your home more appealing to to the next buyer? Well, after the 100 days, we started to lower the price point a bit. Mm -hmm. So, I guess starting off at a lower price or maybe the price point we brought it down to. Yeah. Now, um, when you chase the market like that. Yeah you know why that's not effective, right? No, I haven't, I mean. Okay, anything we put on the market, the longer it sits, Mm -hmm. and we know, hey, it's been on the market 30 days, 60 days, it's perceived value starts to go down, right? Yeah. So this next time, you wanna make sure you price it right from the beginning so you don't have to deal with that, yeah? 
Right. Yeah. Cool. So what I'm gathering, Tanner, is potentially there was a, a maybe a misstep or an error in the strategic kind of plan that you guys had in selling the home. Would you agree with that? Obviously, yeah, I think so. Because cool. other homes are selling. Cool. Now, if there's any hope that your home can still sell, uh -huh. would you still want to make this move? Yes, I think, but it would have to, you know. You see that question? Yeah. If there was any hope, meaning, I'm not saying, hey, let's get together and let's sell. That would be very direct. I've said, if there's any hope, mm -hmm. and that makes you go, and notice like when I ask these questions, you're looking up, mm -hmm. that means I'm getting you to think, and you're picturing things that I'm talking about, which is what I want you to do, mm -hmm. right? This is the, the, the power in being able to script at a higher level, is I can pose questions and ideas to you that get you to think mm -hmm. and get you out of the situation of, oh, I'm talking to a stranger, right? So when I say that, I can appeal to, well, right, all I need is a little bit of motivation and they'll agree versus, well, it sounds like we need to get together. That's a lot more direct and you'll say no. Mm -hmm. I say, well, if there's any hope, would you still make this move? You see how powerful of a question that is? Mm -hmm. And most people, if there's even a sliver of motivation, what do you think they're going to say? Yes. Yeah. So let's do this, Tanner. I'm not promising anything and we really need to take a look at this complete situation. Mm -hmm. Why don't we get together for 10 or 15 minutes and have a conversation and see where this leads. And here's what I'll promise you. If I determine that it can't be done or what you want cannot be achieved, I'll let you know. However, if we do come to the conclusion that we can get this thing sold and you're confident in it, then we can proceed. How does that sound? Sounds fair. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Perfect. All right. And then... We'll go, right? <clears throat> but that's kind of how I do that. Mm -hmm. So if I told you now, let's flip the script mm -hmm. and said, hey, you know what? We're, we're going to hold off. What are you going to say now? You know what, Tanner? Appreciate the call, bro, but I think we're just going to hold off. What do you say now? Take your time, right? No pressure. And be willing to so make gonna, the mistakes. You're going to hold off. Yeah, we're going to hold off, bro. You know, um, I'll, I'll be nice to you. I won't be a dick, but, you know, I think we're going to hold off, bro. Like, we tried for six months and it just it didn't work. Right. So... You came off the market yesterday, correct? Yeah, last night at midnight, technically. Yeah, that's why you guys are calling me today. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you got a ton of calls. Uh, if a buyer came to you yesterday interested in the property, would you consider selling it to them? I would say, what would you have done? What would you have done? Because see, when you say consider selling it, I can easily just say, nah, we changed our mind. Mm -hmm. But if you say, what would you do? I have to think and answer. You see the difference mm -hmm. there? So ask me that again. If a buyer came yesterday, what would you have done? And I'll pause there. <clears throat> mm -hmm. If a buyer had come yesterday, let you process, mm -hmm. what would you have done? If a buyer came yesterday, what would, you, what would you have done? Well, I don't know. I guess if they were really serious, technically we were still on the market, yeah, we would have, you know, if they submitted a decent offer, we would have at least attempted to sell it. Mm -hmm. So what I'm hearing is it sounds like you're still open to sell it. You, you want to soften that a little bit. Mm -hmm. Because right there, I could say, well, yeah, but like I want like a guarantee this time because this mm -hmm. last dude said all the right things and he didn't get the home sold. Mm -hmm. So a better way of saying this, uh, so it sounds to me like you still want to sell it, Tanner, but it, like it, there has to be a guarantee or like you need to know this time that for sure it's going to sell, right? You see how that's different than just, well, it sounds like you still want to sell it. That could seem a little bit like, ah, you said that just to get me to say it. You know what I mean? So go ahead, rephrase it. Mm -hmm. So, if a buyer came to you yesterday, what would you do? What would I have done? What would you have done? Uh, I probably would have entertained it, yeah, if they submitted an offer. I mean, yeah, we won't still want to move. Just we're frustrated. So, what I'm hearing correctly is, in order you, for you to consider the... Start over. So... Go ahead. Mm-hmm. Okay. Take as many tries as you need. For you to consider relisting this property, you it sounds like you need an actual guarantee that this thing's going to sell. Too much. Too much. Mm -hmm. I'll give you a few. I'll say it different ways just so you have an idea. Mm -hmm. well, what I'm hearing, Tanner, is you want to move. It's just all the pieces need to fall into the right place. Here's another one. So, Tanner, you definitely do still want to move. It's just you're really, really frustrated about the process. Here's another one. Tanner, so what I'm getting from you is you definitely still have the desire to move. You just feel like it can't be done. That was three, right? So Brian, what I'm hearing, correct? If I'm <laughs> so, what I'm hearing is you still have the desire to move, but you want 
want it to be guaranteed for it to be done. Oh my gosh. It's okay. Keep yeah. going. That's why we're doing it, bro. I, li I like having the extra pressure on you because it's just going to make you better. Go ahead. Keep going. So it sounds like you want to be guaranteed. Can you say it again, please? Sure. I'll give you more examples. More. Yeah. I'm hearing, Tanner, that you want to move. Uh -huh. I just feel like you don't believe that this process is going to work necessarily. I, here's another one. Tanner, it seems to me like you want to move. You just need to make sure that the strategy this time will get you that result for sure. Here's another one. Well, Tanner, I know you want to move. You're just not confident in this process anymore, right? There you go. You see, you see how it's just, it's free flowing? Now, yeah. again, of course, I have so much experience, bro, compared to you and all that, so I can fucking flip flop in a million different ways, but just relax, man, mm -hmm. you know, and just let it come out. And like you always hear, just like the previous training, there's downswings, there's no upswing, and I'm, I'm not uncertain. So I always tell people this you can be wrong. You can't be uncertain when it comes to sales. You can be wrong. I can give you the wrong price and we can fix it. Hey, I made a mistake. Let's price it right. However, I can't be uncertain. And when I'm uncertain, you won't trust me. Mm -hmm. And I'm not a good salesperson. So you can be wrong and embrace being wrong. We can't be uncertain though. Go ahead. Yeah, I would have taken, you know, if a buyer came, yeah, for sure. I would have been like, hey, you want to submit an offer? For sure. And of course. Right. So you still want to sell, but you're not confident in the process. Exactly, yeah, because we tried it and it didn't work. Mm -hmm. yeah, good, that was good. So now where would you take it? Well, all <laughs> I'm proposing... See, now, I wouldn't go for the meeting right then. Yeah, it's too soon. I, no? Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. Um, so it sounds like we, we may need to adjust something in the strategy this time then, right? Mm-hmm. What do you yeah. think was done uh, improperly this last time? What do you think could have been done better? Mm -hmm. And that's no different than the question on the script. How do you feel about the job that they did? What do you think could have been done? What, what do you think they could have done differently? That's in the script. That's in the expired script. I just presented that question in a different way. That's how you stay scripted but flexible. Mm -hmm. I'm still using the questions from the script. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm just adding in my own little bit of flavor, but I'm also qualifying and asking you questions. Mm -hmm. right? So that's where I would take that. Do you see how logically that makes sense? Because mm -hmm. you want to make sure that this conversation, it makes sense in a conversational format. We can't just jump around. I can't say, hi, is this Tanner? Hey, let's get together uh, Wednesday. You're gonna be like, what the fuck? That doesn't make any sense, right? You jump from the beginning to the end. Mm -hmm. So we need to make sure that this thing from a sequence standpoint is proper, mm -hmm. right? That's why you have to know the script because then you know based on what they're saying where they fall in that script. Make sense? Yeah. Cool. All right. Let's continue. Or do you need me to give you more examples? No, good? good? Okay, cool. Yeah, um, you're right. You know, I'm just not confident in the process, man. This dude didn't get the job done. So something's got to give. Something's got to change. So, Brian, you still want this home sold, yes? Yeah. Yes. Whether that be now or later. I want you to say that confidently, though. Yeah. Hey, you still want this home sold, yeah? Because mm -hmm. you can use the upswing with the question but still be more confident. Because you're very like, you still want it sold, yeah? I was like, no, you still want it sold, yeah? Mm -hmm. I'm still using an upswing, but it's confident. You see the difference? Go ahead, say it again. Brian. <laughs> <laughs> You're good, bro. Go ahead, go ahead. You still want the home sold, yeah? Yep. Whether that be now or later. Sure. If it could be sold, you would feel confident putting it back on the market, right? If it could, yeah. Can you, can you guarantee that, though? I'm confident we can make that happen for you. When See, now, now you're getting uncertain again. That was good for like mm -hmm. 10 seconds there, but you got to... I don't feel like I'm confident. We can, yeah, and, and what you're doing is a little bit more scripted, but that's fine because when you're nervous, you default to that. That's good. That's why I want you to fucking know this shit because then even if you're nervous, you're still going to spit out the right words, which is what you want. Then later, you can be fucking rico suave and super smooth and take it wherever you want. But keep going, bro. It's good. Well, yeah, man, if you can guarantee it, absolutely. I'm open to meet, but you better not be bullshitting me. Yeah, no, I wouldn't waste your time. And I don't good. Waste my that was time good. Yeah. Perfect. So, so what do you propose? Yeah, why don't we do this? Let's set aside 15 to 20 minutes, unless you have questions. Uh, we can go over our process and what we would do differently. Cool. Show you what the, the so you can compare it to what the other agent did and you have our, our strategy in place. Okay, I guess I'm open to that. Yeah. I gotta talk to my wife though. Yeah, for sure. Uh, would afternoons or evenings be better for both of you? To be available at the same yeah, time. Yeah, I'm not sure. I mean, I guess I could I could run it by the wife, but probably afternoons. Yeah. yeah. If you had to guess when 
are you most likely to be home together? Wednesday nights. Wednesday nights? Yeah. What time exactly? Is there a... That's when you say five or seven. Five or seven? What would be better? What would be better? Five. Five? Okay. Cool. Yeah. I guess still got to run it by the wife though. For sure. Let's do this. Why don't we get Wednesday together? at five, Wednesday, check with the wife. I'll Wednesday call you five. Tuesday to confirm. Cool. All right. Wednesday at five, check with the wife. I'll call you Tuesday. To confirm. To confirm. Cool. No group text? No. You don't need it. You don't need it. You could, but you don't need it. Cool. Okay. Good. All right. Good. You see? Better. Mm -hmm. Better. Better. So we got, um, uh, what was it? <clears throat> We're waiting, right? We're mm -hmm. waiting. We're not now. Not now. Not now. Uh, bring me a buyer, right? Do you, do you feel equipped for that one? Bring me a buyer? No. No? Okay, cool. So tell me that. And I'll just give you a million different responses. Bring me a buyer. Bring me a buyer. What kind of buyer? Uh, <laughs> a buyer that's going to offer market value. Okay, so you want top, top fair market value. Top it's not about value. how quick, if it's cash or not. You just want the most money. Uh, depends. Depends on their price. But So is it... Price or is it because fair market yeah. value is a set price, but you see how I already have you backpedaling and thinking mm -hmm. versus just running the conversation. You see the difference there? Because mm -hmm. because yeah. let's say you answer it. What do you mean? What buyer? Let's say you said that I would say, well, there's investors. You want a cash buyer? Do you want a traditional buyer who's probably going to take a little bit longer, but pay you the most money? What are you looking for? Mm -hmm. What do you think most people would say in that? Are you looking for the most money or convenience? What are you looking for? In this situation, probably convenience. Right? No? Most money? Well, the average seller, what do they want? Convenience or the most, most money? money? There you go. Yeah. So how are we going to get the most money? Do you know? I don't know. Giving your property maximum exposure to the right, ready, willing, and able, qualified buyers. Would you agree with that? I agree. Okay. Now, unfortunately, this last time, that, didn't, that wasn't achieved. Yes? Yes. So what are you going to do this time to ensure that you expose your home to all the qualified buyers? Uh, okay, I good one, right? <laughs> so let's flip it. Let's say you're a FISBO. Yeah. So what are you doing right now, sir? I see you're on Zillow and I called you. What are you doing to expose your home to not just anybody, but the qualified buyers who are willing and able to pay you the most money? Entertain it? No, what are you doing to promote it to What them? are you doing to promote yeah. it? Yeah, you're on Zillow. Cool, yeah, I found you. I called you. Yeah. I'm an agent. Have you gotten a lot of agent calls, by the way? Oh, for sure. How many buyers, though? Yeah, no. Investors yet? A few. Okay, yeah. cool. You don't want an investor though. No. You want the most money. Yes. Cool. So aside from this, what are you doing to market the home? We have a, we've created a website. Awesome. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. One, two, three Elm Nice. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Yeah. How's that been going? It's there. Cool. Yeah. Okay. See, we're in the conversation now, but you told me, bring me a buyer, right? Yeah. That's all this is. Again, when you hear, bring me a buyer, you don't have to like handle it. And then like you're done and you win and you raise your fist in victory. All we're doing here is handling whatever we need to handle enough to keep the conversation going. Because typically you hear that in the beginning of a conversation, right? Mm -hmm. But do you see what I'm doing with it? What kind of buyer? That immediately throws a wrench in the air because nobody says that. Mm -hmm. You know, oh, we know we're not going to list. We're only going to work with people. Oh, cool. So you are willing to cooperate with agents. And they're going to say what? Yeah, of course. What are you offering? Oh, we're offering 2%. Fantastic. I found you on Zillow. What else are you using to market the home? We're in the conversation now, right? Like I don't have to like stand on bring me a buyer and smash it. Mm -hmm. Remember the whole goal when you guys get objections is handle it enough to keep the conversation going. Unless it's at the very end when you're asking for the appointment, then we need to handle it. But that's a specific scenario. You get the difference? Mm -hmm. Cause is that where you really feel stuck with bring me a buyer or any of these? It's like, yeah, I kind of know how to handle it, but just keeping the conversation going is the toughest part. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, there you go. So tell me again, bring me a buyer. Bring a buyer. Cool. Are you looking for like an investor that's going to pay you cash? Or are you looking for uh, maybe a buyer who's going to pay you more and potentially get financing? Which which is more your... A buyer who's going to pay us more and get financing. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, how are you guys going about screening those buyers, by the way? Like if I bring you the buyer, how do you know they're legitimate? Uh, they normally have an agent with them. I don't... You see where I'm going? Like, I just made that up, but like, again, I'm, I'm testing the waters and kind of seeing what you say. Yeah. Cool. So, I mean, if we provide you like a pre-approval letter or something like that, you would, you would want that before the, the showing or can I just bring you anybody? The pre-approval wouldn't, wouldn't hurt. Okay, cool. Is it required though to go look at your home? 
No, it's not required to look at it. I would use that later. I would put a note, right? Mm -hmm. And let's say we were, we were to meet later. Like, let's say, uh, I'll take note of that, right? We'll keep the conversation going, but that would be something that you would use because as an agent, you know, you're not supposed to bring random people into your house. You're supposed to have only qualified buyers come. That's the ammunition that you can use. So let's mm -hmm. say I met with you a week later. Say, remember when we first talked, you mentioned that I could bring anybody. I didn't need the pre-approval. Mm -hmm. Well, do you really want people in your home who can't buy it? Or do you only want people who are ready, willing, and able? And ready qualified? And able. Yeah. You told me last week, though, that you would take anybody. Yeah, that's true. I guess I didn't realize. Right? But see, I would make a mental note of it. I wouldn't handle that on the phone, but I'm making that point mm -hmm. so you get it. This is what <laughs> separates professionals from everybody else. Right? Mm -hmm. Same thing with the price. Let's say, cool, um, you're asking 500 Tanner, for the home? Yes. Yeah. Any wiggle room there, or are you firm? A little wiggle room. A little bit. I would make a note of that, right? Because then later I can say, if you admit that there's wiggle room, you already told me that you'll accept something less than the full asking price, right? Mm-hmm. Do you do that in negotiations? Do you show a weakness to the other side or do you hold firm? Hold firm. Well, did you in that, in that scenario? No. Because hmm. again, if you told me you have wiggle room, you think I'm gonna offer full asking price? No. <laughs> see, this is stuff we can use later, right? You get what I'm saying? But this is what gives me the confidence when I talk to them to just dismantle them in my mind and not be like, oh, it's a FISBO. Because in your mind, I'll ask you this straight up. Do you think a FISBO can actually sell on their own and they don't need us? I don't think so. Good. That's why we need the confidence to be like, well, I know they may believe it. And they can sell on their own, no doubt. But they're not going to get the most money compared to what I can get them. Mm -hmm. But you have to know that and stand by it. That way, if they throw anything at you, you're not like... Because a lot of agents, one of the biggest mistakes they make is when they talk to a FISBO, they're like, well, maybe they can sell. And there's like this doubt. So they never push, right? The doubt I have with that is... Yeah. It'll be close because they're selling, they're listing it at comparable prices. Okay. Ooh, I'm glad you made that point. Listen to this. Um, how do I get top fair market value for any commodity, anything, any item, good, yeah. in an open market? Yeah, you price it lower than what the comparables are. Cool. Listed. Prices of, but what's the number one most Getting important it thing? Exposed to maximum yeah, exposure. Maximum exposure. Yeah. Does a FISBO have maximum exposure even if they price something correctly? No. Therefore the market will not give them that price. Mm -hmm. That price, the fair market value price, is assuming all those other factors are in place, such as maximum exposure. Mm -hmm. I could have all the, all, all the right product, but if nobody knows about it and not enough people know about it, the right buyers, am I going to get that price for it? No. I just destroyed that. Oh, well, they put it at the right price. Yeah. What if uh, after the commission, like let's say they have it listed... But again, price. they're not going to get that price without the because agent. It's not, gonna, it's not going to even happen. Exactly. Gotcha. Right? Plus the, the statistics. On average, the for sale by owner sell for, I think, it's like 10 to 15% less than an agent represented property. Mm -hmm. So if that's 500000 that means they'll sell anywhere from uh, 450 to 425 So if I sell it at five hundred and I pay and they save 3% by going FISBO, what's the difference? It's $15,000. Mm -hmm. But going FISBO, they're going to lose fifty to $75,000. What's fifty and seventy-five thousand dollars in loss compared to fifteen thousand that you invested in the commission? Yeah, gotcha. Okay. And that's on average. Did you know that the owner for sellbyowner.com tried to sell his property in New York and ended up using an agent? And he admitted himself after paying commissions, he made more money than he thought he would without paying commissions. Oh, for real? That's, that's funny. That's an article that you can look up on Google. Huh. That that helps. Now, think of this: in the advent and introduction of the internet, where Information is available. Agents are going to be obsolete if we weren't worth that 6%. Don't you think the word would have gotten out by now and we wouldn't be used anymore? And the internet would have taken over? Because it's been out. The MLS went digital and went online back in the year like 2000, dude. It's been a long time. Right? Review sites are out. Zillow's out. If we really weren't worth that fee, wouldn't the world have figured it out by now? I'm just giving you arguments so you get it, right? Mm -hmm. So like if I had to debate somebody about agents, mm -hmm. these are the points that I would use to smash them. But I know that a good agent, I'm not talking about every agent, but a good agent is worth their money. I know I'm worth that fucking money for sure. I can't say that for every agent because I agree the bar is very low in our industry and that needs to change. Mm -hmm. But you get what I'm saying? So again, the word, the word would be out. Just like travel agents, all that are pretty much obsolete. Like a lot of things have changed because of the advent of the internet and introduction of it, right? So if we really weren't worth it, wouldn't the word have gotten out and people wouldn't use us and we wouldn't be making any money? 
Yeah, for sure. Right? So I'm making all these points to you so it gives you that confidence. Mm -hmm. Because that, that one is big. I'm glad you brought it. Because people say, well, if they, they price it right, what do I do? Well, that's assuming there's a presupposition there that all the other factors are in place, which they're not. So they're not going to get that price. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. Would the iPhone sell for a thousand bucks if nobody knew about it? No. It's still worth a thousand right now. You know, every time it comes out, I've done it. I'll be lined up outside of the store the day that it comes out. I remember I did that years ago to get that thing and pay for it or overpay. But if nobody knew about it, would they pay that much? Probably not. This is why they advertise and, and they show it to the public and they create all that pent up demand. And then by the time it releases, people will pay for it or they'll overpay, right? Mm -hmm. That's the power, that's what we bring in on their own. They're just, you know, they'll be like, oh, well look, Tanner, I got a thousand hits on Zillow. It's like, but are those buyers though? Mm -hmm. Or are those just people that are looking? Probably 500 of those are agents. 490 don't have the balls to call you. I'm part of the 10 that did. But is that a buyer? Am I as the agent going to buy your property? No, I'm not. Right? Got it? Okay, cool. Let, let, let's do it again. Tell me that. Okay. Uh, bring me a buyer. Can I ask you a quick question? Sure, sure. What if uh, they don't have to sell? They're just testing. They're just testing the market, see if it would sell and if they got any interest in it. Okay, cool. So uh, where do you draw the line with testing? What determines if you sell or not? Is it just the price? Yeah. Okay, so this price that you're asking, 500000 if I could get it to you, if I could get that for you, would you consider hiring me? Yes. After, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See what I'm saying? Like, that's how easy it is. This, is. this is rocket science. Cool. Oh, no, okay, then, then be difficult with me. No, but I don't want to pay the commission right. or I need a net X amount. Yeah, yeah, I, we, we want to net 500000 Okay, cool. So. so if I came in, charge you any fee, but I net you five hundred, would you consider hiring me? Or is that out of the question? We'd consider it. You, we just want 500. You can, cool. Okay. Then let's do this. Let's set up a time Wednesday or Thursday, whichever works better for you. I'll crunch the numbers to see. Now, if I do determine that I can't get it for you, you would consider hiring me, yes, if we meet and everything looks good? Yes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> see how easy that is? But okay, okay. Be difficult with me. Tell me no. Okay. All right. Three bedroom, two bath, thousand square feet. No, be diff. We, we want a million dollars. Okay. Now, when you look at your neighborhood, mm -hmm. would you honestly say that property is worth a million? It's a sh strong building. It's going to last forever. It's going to last a long time. So if I grabbed one of your neighbors and said, hey, is Tanner, right? That's your name I see here. Yeah. Is Tanner's house worth a million? What do you think they would say? You're shaking your head no. No, no. Yeah. Okay. So you're basically, you understand that you're asking for more than it's worth is what I'm getting at. You do realize that, right? I mean, maybe maybe I miscalculated the, the, the square feet. Let's say it's four, three thousand. No, but I'm, just, I'm basically just... saying, okay, so you know that what you're asking for is out of the ordinary, and you would want maybe that one miracle situation where someone's yes. willing to overpay for your property, right? Right. And that's right. the only reason you would sell. Right. Okay. Cool. So. I'm, I'm, I'm just kind of curious as to why, why a million and why, why now? Mm -hmm. Well, we tried to sell it for 1.5, but it, okay. it didn't sell. So okay, so now okay, now if we're pause, if we're like in a 500 thousand dollar neighborhood, I'd be like, get the fuck out. Yeah, of here. we're not in, right. Yeah, so but if it's like if it's like a million and the homes are worth 950, we're there. But if it's like a 800 thousand dollar neighborhood and they want a million, it's a waste of your time. Mm -hmm. So you have to, I think 10 percent is the max. Yeah. If they demand more than five or 10 percent above, it's not even worth a conversation. I wouldn't even worry about it because, like, if you're in an eight hundred thousand dollar neighborhood and dude's asking two million, mm -hmm. obviously he's on crack. You know what I mean? Or like he he's showing that he's not serious, yeah. and you don't have to worry about it. He needs more crack, right? Yeah. Cool. Right. He needs more crack. That's cool. funny. All right. So again, tell me, bring me a buyer. We'll keep drilling it. All right. Bring me a buyer. Okay. Uh, are you looking to close immediately? What does the time frame look like? I bring you a buyer today. When's your ideal close date? Depends how much they're, they're offering. I mean, if they're offering, I've offered you full yeah, market value. Full market value, we're ready to go. So, if I found a buyer who's willing to close in two or three days, you can be out that quick. Do you have a buyer? I'm not calling because I have a buyer. Okay. I'm getting the details. Okay. I do work sure. with a lot of buyers and a lot of people. I just uh -huh. I don't know specifically. That's why I'm asking these okay. questions. You see how I handled that? Yes, sir. Yeah. I admitted I'm not calling you because I have a buyer. I work with buyers, plenty of buyers, mm -hmm. but I wanted to find out the specifics.
Gotcha. Okay. How do you handle that when they say, do you have a buyer? I bite my tongue. <laughs> or you just bullshit? Yeah, just yeah. bullshit. Yeah, yeah. cool. I, I and that's why in my answer, you notice that I admitted I'm not calling you because I have a specific buyer. It's okay to say that. Mm -hmm. Because it's like, well, if you don't have a buyer, why are you calling? Tell me that. Yeah. Well, if you don't have a buyer, why are you calling me? Okay. Do you know how the whole, there's many ways to answer that, right? But to say, look, if I had a buyer and told you that I had a buyer, would you believe me? No. <laughs> you think most people are going to say that, right? Because, mm -hmm. I mean, that's what they're thinking, right? Or you would be kind of hesitant. Yeah. Well, does he really have a buyer or not, right? Mm -hmm. Now, if I don't know anything besides the price of your home or any details, how could I know if it's a good fit for one of my buyers? That's why I'm calling. That's how I would answer that, right? You can say, well, would you believe me? That's a funny way of handling it. But if not, I would say, well, I'm calling to get some more details because I could potentially, or I could run into one in the future. Because mm -hmm. I'm working with a lot of sellers right now who may want to relocate and purchase your home. But if you don't want to talk, that's okay. You see how I did pulled away there? That's mm -hmm. a takeaway. Oh no, and they'll continue the conversation typically, right? Easy, easy, you wanna keep it simple, okay? Go ahead, throw something else at me that you think they would say or something that maybe throws you off now that we're more in the flow. Anything, could be bringing uh, a buyer, anything. Yeah, yeah. Well, if we don't get it sold, we're just gonna rent it out. Okay, cool. Uh, ideally, do you want to rent it out long term or in a perfect world, do you wanna sell it? Well, we could rent it out now and sell it later when the market gets better. We're cool. just curious right now. All right. Are you aware that you can do both? You can put it up for rent and for sale and see which one you get a better deal for? How would that work? You can do it simultaneously. You can okay. put it up for sale and also available for lease at the same time. Did you know that? No. Okay. Well, this is what we can do. I propose if you're interested in renting it, we can take a look at maybe what the rental prices are in your area. Mm -hmm. And then we can sit down and say, hey, if we put it up for sale this price, for rent this price, and put it out on the open market and see whichever one you like. How does that sound? Yeah, it would be open here now. What if, what if uh, we get a tenant in there and would that prevent, would that uh, make the home less attractive if we're trying to sell it? Well, if you do end up getting a tenant and then you sell, well, obviously, yeah, because it's tenant occupied, right? Mm -hmm. And when you have the multiple tiers of the final sales price, vacant and remodeled and super nice is going to be the highest sales price you're going to get. Gotcha. Can you still sell it with the tenant? Absolutely. However, you're not going to get top, top, top fair market value. Gotcha. Would that affect your decision? Yeah. Cool. Then it probably sounds like instead of putting a tenant in there, you'd want to put it on the market do it correctly this time, get the right price, get it sold, cash out, right? Right. There you go. Cool. There you go. Cool. All right.